what is the very next thing you should do in the following situations? Your boss sees you in the hallway and says, I need that presentation before afternoon, Jack. Your wife calls you in the middle of the day and tells you that you're invited to her brother's birthday party this weekend. Your friend texts you that he's going through a bad situation and needs to meet with you tomorrow. You feel overwhelmed with ideas about topics to talk about in your YouTube channel. So, what is the very first thing you should do right after these situations? Exactly. You should write them down. Yet what should be a common notion isn't always a common action. Capturing information is the very first step in being productive. Otherwise, there won't be anything to act upon in the first place. And writing is the best tool for that. Welcome to Wellbeing Toolkit, empowering you with the right tools so you can apply, achieve what you need, and upgrade your life. If this is what you need, then join us. As we discussed in the first session about basics, one of the bad habits that people tend to have is using their mind to capture, process, organize, and remind them of all tasks and events. And while your brain is this super organ we all have, yet it is not the best tool for that because of the following. First argument is that your mind delivers information to you using three R's model, request, relevance, and recency meaning that you have to request your mind to project all the needed tasks for a given day, and even if you have good memory, there is a high chance that you'll forget at least one thing which can be important. Your mind will deliver relevant tasks to your surroundings. That's why you remember to buy milk when you run out of it, and that's why in the example above with your boss, you remember the presentation when you pass by his office or see his name in your phone. With recency, your mind reflects what was recently added. So with your wife's situation, you might remember that birthday for a day or two, but if this was on Monday, then you'll probably forget about it by Wednesday with all that is going on with your life. Second argument is that even if you have this super mind that remember all the tasks and that you can actually visually see the different files and folders inside your mind, my question will be, do you want to waste that superpower to document things like organized garage or clean fridge or empty boxes? It's like Superman uses his freeze power to cool drinks or using a Ferrari to dry clothes. It doesn't make sense. That's why it's really important to externalize information by writing them down using another tool than your mind. So you won't forget them and hence suffer the consequences. Whether it's your boss not promoting you because you don't deliver on time or your wife thinking you don't care about her family that much or your friends thinking you're not someone they can rely on when they need to or you getting more and more depressed. In this session, we'll continue our productivity tools course with the note-taking and journaling toolkit. If you didn't watch the first session about the basics, I highly recommend watching it first, then watching this one after. The link is in the card above and in the description below. With that being said, let's open the mind map and begin. The first productivity toolkit we have today is about note-taking and journaling. Let's look at the purpose of this toolkit. First purpose is to grab the information. Notice that I didn't say collect, because grabbing information refers to all the ways you can receive them through, whether it's via email, phone call, texting, shouting it out in the hallway. Whereas collect refers to something delivered to you formally, like collect information from emails or letters or mailbox, etc. When your boss requests the presentation while seeing you in the hallway, you want to grab that information even if it wasn't requested formally through email or letter. Second purpose is to hold these ideas objectively in a place outside your mind so you can get back to them whenever and whatever you want without feeling stressed that you forgot something. Third purpose is to dial down noise in your mind through journaling ideas, scripts, stories, etc. Aside from the general criteria we mentioned in the first sessions, the basics that you should look out for before choosing a tool, journaling and note-taking tools should have more specific criteria when you choose them. It is the ability to create sections. The reason behind that is to be organized by having a section for note-taking and a totally different one for journaling. Let's look at the different tools we recommend and how to use them properly. First, we have pen and paper. This is a physical tool and its benefits are it's fast, it's cheap, perfect for journaling and note-taking. If you're not convinced you don't need to use pen and paper, then let's look at who needs them. 
Of course, professional writers and bloggers need them as they are available whenever and wherever they go without the distractions of using digital devices. Also, we have those who use journaling as a hobby can benefit from using them too. Inventors and thinkers who need to capture their many ideas, especially those who like to get involved with their hands. And finally, anyone who can be subjected to receive information that might hold a task in it should and can use pen and paper to grab it right there and then. And I believe we all fall under that category. Of course, most of the people use their phones to do this, but if you're like me, who doesn't have the phone attached to your pocket, then you need a small notepad with a pen attached to your pocket instead to grab the information. So, how to set it up? First, you need to have it portable with you, so it should fit your pocket or bag, and second, you need to have it sectioned, one for note-taking and one for journaling. First tool we have is the notepads. They are useful in note-taking and journaling as well. They can be personalized or customized for you, so you get to choose the one that suits you the most, or you can even create your own one with the help of local stationeries. They can be sectioned easily and they come in different sizes to choose from. For the large ones, they have the benefits of being sectioned or ready for you to just use, but they need to be carried in bags or something due to their large size. For the small notepads, they are cheaper, they are smaller to fit in your pocket or give you more room in your bag. They are mostly useful for quick information, tasks, and ideas. They are not preferred for journaling because of the limited space, but it can work. Mostly they don't come in sections, so you need to do it yourself, and the best and easy trick is to use one side to take notes, and you flip the notepads and use the other side for journaling. One thing to take care of if you'll have them in your pocket is the pen size. Make sure it suits your pocket and won't break or hurt you while sitting. In the description, you'll find links to a few examples of the pocket notepads that you can use today. The other tool I recommend using is the note-taking wallet. Not only it's useful for note-taking, but also it saves you from crowding your pockets by having the money, your licenses, and credit cards in as well. It is suitable for all your formal and casual clothes. Check the description for one that you can try out today. Second tool in this toolkit is the physical sticky notes. They are good for note-taking and brainstorming. Recently, there are different apps and tools that are based on the physical sticky notes idea, such as Mural, which is a virtual whiteboard for teams to collaborate using sticky notes for their ideas. Also, there is what is called design thinking to solve problems and create customer-based programs and solutions. If you came across this methodology, you'll find out that they use sticky notes in almost all of its stages. Anyone can use sticky notes. And the best way to use them is, first, to distribute them all over the place, beside the phone and laptop, in the kitchen, in the living room and bedroom, and also in your car. Second, you need to identify only one place to collect them in, whether it's a physical basket, a folder, or even a wall you dedicate in your office or home to put them on. Third tool is Google Keep Notes app, which is a digital free tool available in your devices and also on the web. It has different input tools like writing, recording, picturing, or sketching. It is very good with both note-taking and journaling. Anyone can use it because it's free and easy to use. And because you have your sticky notes around your house and office, then I recommend using them only with the phone app, especially if you prefer taking notes with your phone or if you're not around a physical sticky notes or if you don't use pocket notepads or note-taking wallet. I recommend using the widget as it gives you the different input options all in one bar in your main screen. So you can just click on the microphone button and record your message, or you can choose the writing option, or maybe you can sketch it. Remember that while this is a great tool for long commuters like myself, but you have to keep in mind that safety comes first. If you have to pull over to write down that information, then do it. Fourth tool we have for today is the Microsoft Word tool which is a free digital one available in all devices, easy to use, and best used for long writing like journaling, creating blog content, or video scripts. It is not recommended for note-taking. Personally, I think it's overqualified for note-taking, like going to street fight with a bazooka. The first productivity way to use Word is by learning the different shortcuts for the functions you use the most. For example, I use Word to write my scripts, and the functions I use the most are copies, so I hit Ctrl-C, 
paste, so I hit Control V, cut, Control X, make font bold for important parts, Control B, make it italic for references, Control I, insert comment, so Alt, then N, then L. Also, sometimes I use word for linear brainstorming, and the shortcut for that is to click Alt, then the letter V, then the letter O. By the way, the importance of shortcuts, as proven by some studies, is that using shortcuts can save you around eight days per year. The second productivity way to use Word is to improve your speed writing, which can improve your productivity and save you up to 20 days per year. Again, also backed up by some studies. Our fifth tool is OneNote application, which is free digital tool available in all your devices. It is easy to use, not easy to understand at first, so you have to spend some time learning the tool to benefit from its multiple functions. It has the ability of creating sections, as advised earlier, and it is good to use for note-taking and journaling. It also gives you the ability to write on them, sketch on them, take pictures with them, record audio, and even attach any of the above from another resource, meaning that it allows you to compile everything in one place, which is good in some situations. So if you're taking notes with it for a lecture, you can include pictures in it either by yourself or include it from somewhere else. You can also add a recording to a specific part in that lecture to help you study better later on. Another benefit is that you can integrate it with your mail tool, like Outlook, so you can add tasks, notes, meeting information directly from Outlook to OneNote. On the other hand, it has some things to consider, like it has one widget for each input option, so you have one widget for writing, another one for recording, and another one for taking picture, and another one for sketching, which is slightly confusing and take up the majority of your phone screen. So I recommend just using the one for the most common input way you use, like writing, and ignore the others. Also for the sharing option, if you're printing what you have in one note, or sending it or sharing it with someone else who needs to print them, then you need to adjust the screen size first to match the paper size, which is usually A4, otherwise you'll lose some of the data on the sides. So how to set this app right? First, you need to learn it well, as mentioned before. Second. If you're using the phone app, then I recommend just using one or maximum two widgets for the common input options you use, like writing and taking pictures, or writing and recording audio for long commuters, etc. Third, you create a section for note taking and another one for journaling. You can do that by creating either a separate section for each or a separate page for each in the same section. The last thing in setting up OneNote is what we mentioned before, to take care of the page setup if you're printing what you grab and collect. Otherwise, if you don't print them or don't need to print them, enjoy the unlimited white space. Sixth tool in this toolkit is Evernote, which is almost the same as OneNote with almost the same benefits, features, disadvantages, and setting up recommendations. It has different lock and small other distinguishers, and from my personal productivity concerns, I see both Evernote and OneNote in the same level. Try both for yourself and see which one you lean towards the most. The seventh and final tool for today doesn't belong to grabbing information, but to collect them into one single location. I call it the collector tool, with the purpose of having all your notes and unprocessed journaling ideas and drafts into one single location, either digitally or physically as you see fit. For the digital tools, you can use the inbox folder, which is already in your email for you to send things to yourself or receive things from others. You can also have or create an inbox folder in tools like OneNote and Evernote, which should be basically the note-taking section you created before. You have to remember our fourth principle, limit the tools, which we discussed in the first session. This means to have as many tools as you need and as few as you can. So you already must use your work email inbox, for example. So the best way to work with your other notes is to send them to your work email and process them there. Otherwise, you will have to go through different inbox folders on a daily basis, which is both frustrating and you're most likely to forget one. Can you imagine how many inbox folders you have already and should check on a daily basis? There's the work email one. Some of us use WhatsApp for their work and socializing, so they have to check that too. Some also uses apps like OneNote and Evernote to store information, so you have to go there too. Some also uses to-do list managers with an inbox folder, so if you're one of those people, by the end of the day, you have to go through minimum of four different inbox folders to process information and notes there. Minimum four. 
I didn't include your personal email. I didn't include your normal texting or Facebook or Instagram or YouTube notifications with needed actions. That's why, for the sake of your brain sanity and your time cost, I recommend minimizing your collector tool to as few as you can using the main ones you already use. So, if it is your work email, then you can choose to send all the notifications to it or sync it with other tools like Evernote and OneNote so that you can send notes directly to your email. Thus, by the end of the day, you will find out that you got rid of at least two inboxes to go through on a daily basis. I know from a math point of view that you will be processing the same information, but moving from one app to another to process information consumes energy, increases distractions, increases procrastination, and decreases productivity. The other way to minimize your digital collection is to transform it physically by printing them for processing, which is not always applicable. Beside the digital tool, you must have a physical one to collect all your physical notes and unprocessed journaling papers. You have multiple options here. You can choose to work with workstations trays that are good collectors for even tiny pieces of papers, as what usually happens, right? In the description, I included some trays that I recommend. The other tool you can use to collect your notes and information is the zipper file bag, which I use because I move between locations in my work. So the best way for me to have all the notes to process whenever and whatever is by using these colored zipper file bags. I like the zipper option to keep everything in and I'm using different colors for different purposes. So red is my physical inbox, yellow is my outgoing, the green is my reading material, the article I printed to read or the minutes of meetings of last department meetings that I missed. Blue is my project folder, which I put different paper folders that contain project updates. And I also use it in my coaching sessions to store each session's update per person. So the next time I see him or her, I review in a couple of pages what we discussed and agreed to do next. Again, check the description for the link to these practical productivity tools. Finally, I will share my personal tools in this first toolkit we discussed about journaling and note-taking. I use pen and paper as my primary note-taking tool. And I use both the large notepads for work-related notes, taking minutes of meetings and mind mapping, and I use the small-sized pocket notepads everywhere. I don't get out of the house either for work or fun without having them attached to my pocket. I also use physical sticky notes or small-sized papers in my work and home offices. I use Google Keep Notes on my phone for long commutes to work or even in errands days. For journaling and long writing, I use Microsoft Word for my video script. My physical collector tool is my zipper file bags, as I discussed above, with their different colors. And so, this is the end of our second session in this Productivity Tools course. And to help me and others learn from your experience, we would like to know, what is your tool for taking notes and journaling, and what do you think is best about them? Share your answers to your preferred note-taking and journaling tool in the comment sections for all of us to learn from each other and explore new options. That's it for today, and until we meet, keep upgrading.